Hey there friends, welcome back. My name is Lauren and this is Han Acre. It's been a minute since I've seen you and I'll be honest, our summer just very quickly uh, got out of control. I felt like early in the season, I had pretty good control over what is now a wild jungle, but then I had to go back to work, obviously, because my maternity leave was over. And I'll tell you, my day job is really, really cutting into my garden time. But uh, until I figure out how many tomatoes I have to sell to pay for health insurance, here we are. We'll see how long my tiny boss allows me to work. <laughs> First thing I'm looking at here is my tomatoes. So it has been kind of a weird year for tomatoes, a difficult year, I should say. There's two things that are impacting our tomato season. Number one, my plants from the very beginning have been under attack uh, by deer and groundhogs, whatever else, I don't know. Um, and they are still, I don't know if you can see that, they are still under pretty heavy attack. So that's number one, deer pressure. Number two, we had a pretty long period of very dry and hot weather earlier in the summer. And the, yes, we did. Uh, and the first kind of round of fruit set on the plants, great. The next round of flowering on these plants was happening during that very dry, hot spell. So those flowers for the plant to kind of protect itself, it drops its flowers. So we are missing kind of like we're missing the fruit kind of from the middle third of the plant. I'm really hoping that I can find some tomatoes today that I can put in the stand because I am totally sold out. Keeping tomatoes in the stand has been a real challenge and I am seeing some good heirlooms in here. So fingers crossed I have enough for my people. How about you guys? There we go. You're a nice little beauty. Okay, tiny boss is getting reckless, so we're we're walking. We're walking. Let's see. Peppers are pretty much the same story as tomatoes. I had a, a few week gap in production that was, you know, if I was just growing for myself, that would be okay. Um, but it was difficult to manage at the stand, especially my bells. Um, I gotta, I gotta up my, up my production. Oh, there's one. So this whole row pretty much is peppers. Oh my goodness, Wyatt. I know I'm excited about peppers too. There really was a few week lull on production for all the peppers, but now these plants are like going crazy. So holding out. I have some volunteer celosia and zinnias. This celosia is kind of a little secret project of mine. This color is not burgundy and not the other pink that you normally see. So I am going to bag this lady, save the seeds, and we'll see, see what we get next year. Maybe I've discovered a new beautiful solution. Who knows? If you've been following along with us for any length of time, you will know that one of my favorite things to grow but also sometimes my least successful <laughs> is pumpkins. So I am excited to see and say uh, that we got some pumpkins. Let's see, I'm gonna check these guys. Cucumber beetle, send you right back where you belong. Okay, these are, these are ready. Ooh, I've got some neat gourds. I haven't come in here yet. Like, I've seen stuff. You're ready. Ooh, look at those gourds. Let's see if those are ready. Hmm, not quite yet. I definitely did have some plant loss this year um, from squash bugs and cucumber beetles. But I expect that, and I honestly am happy anytime I get to pick any pumpkins. Um, I obviously love to decorate with them in my own area um, 
but it's just another thing that I really like to have in the stand in fall. It's another just a season extender, I would say. I normally plan to have a lot of flowers in the fall, um, and those sell well as long as I have something else in the stand to go with them. In my area, just having flowers is not gonna bring people in. I do definitely need to get down here and dig some potatoes. I've got potatoes um, planted all along the edge of this row. So in between the pumpkin row and the very edge, the grass edge, I have a row of potatoes. Um, I need to get them out of the ground and into the stand because I sold too many potatoes. One thing I'm excited about the possibility of having is sweet potatoes. So this is the first year that I have planted sweet potatoes and they have not been completely decimated by deer. I did cover them early in the season and I think that was the key, um, but I still don't know if they have produced anything. So I am just waiting a little bit longer because they have a real long season, um, but I'll show you the plants here. All right, so the reason I said I'm excited about the possibility of sweet potatoes is this. This is supposed to look like that. It's supposed to be full of leaves. Um, and you can see there's just a, like a sea of little nubs because uh, the deer have found these again. But I'm hoping that everything was mature enough where it's not gonna, not gonna matter too much. And one thing that I was able to keep up with, which is amazing, um, is a fall planting of beans, beets, peas, carrots, uh, sunflowers, and something else. Uh, no, that might be it. Alrighty, so we've got beets. Are they, is everything planted too thick? Yep, it sure is, because guess what, I make a row and I don't have time to space. So I'll thin those if I feel like it. Beans, beans, sunflowers in the middle there. Peas are just starting to come up, which is good. My plan for most of these rows is to cover them with these little low tunnels um, so they don't get eaten off because beans are a favorite. All of these things are kind of a favorite of the critters that we have using our garden as a grocery store. I'm really hoping that frost holds off long enough where I can get something off of this planting. Um, carrots and beets and stuff I'm not as worried about, um, but you know, I do have two trays of plugs for a Hail Mary planting of, uh, what do I have? Zucchini, cucumber, and sunflowers. I missed or lost at least three or four plantings of sunflowers that I would normally have in the season. So that really hurt my flower production. Um, so that's been a little bit tough to kind of cobble things together without a big focal flower. Um, but actually, let's go check on the dahlias. So dahlias, in, for me, almost never turn on until late September, early October. Um, so these guys, this is a variety I just call pink speckle very prolific and one of the only ones that's really like hitting its stride right now. You can see over here the celosia and the zinnias are a little tired but I think they're gonna, I think, oh there's a hummingbird. <gasps> oh my goodness. I lost them. Okay well I couldn't, I couldn't track down the hummingbird. Darn it. But I'm glad I saw one. Uh, all right. I don't think my uh, I don't think my boss is very impressed with what I'm doing right now, so I think my time might be up here. Hopefully next time I'll be able to show you what I'm actually doing instead of just talking about it. Um, but you never know. Every day is different, and we just have to go with it. So I would like to thank you all for joining me today enjoy this beautiful fall weather that we're having fall in pennsylvania when we get it really can't be beat i hope that you will join me next time right here on han acre